What's going on guys, it's Rise Product here bringing you a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some PC setups that is going to be good for you in Call of Duty Cold War whenever competitive, uh, you know, switches to that next year, which is a huge, huge announcement. It's going to be a really good thing. This is going to bridge the gap between, you know, getting lucky with a slide cancel or actually, you know, hitting your shots in game. It's going to be a really, really good thing, right? So a lot of people are freaking out that they can't afford a PC. Uh, you know, people are saying, oh, I, I, I can't afford a $2,000 PC when you don't even need a $2,000 PC. That is way overkill. So what I would recommend is going to the links in the description. All these builds are going to be in the description, right? So go check them out. And I'm just going to be rolling through them right now. All the specs really don't matter except for the uh, graphics card. I just put some basic uh, specs, a basic CPU, motherboard, RAM in there, everything else. Uh, all this is the same except for the graphics card right here. So just going through it, we have a, uh, a Ryzen 5 6 core CPU. Uh, the motherboard isn't too big of a deal. It's a it's an ATX motherboard with 16 gigs of RAM, uh, one terabyte hard drive, 240 gigabyte SSD. So you're going to want to install Windows on your SSD and then probably Call of Duty on there as well. Uh, and then the case really isn't too big of a deal. You can change the case if you want. You don't need a flashy case that's going to cost you $200. This one costs $40 and it's going to be just fine. Uh, a 430 watt power supply. You really don't need anything more than that for this build, right? So the graphics card, the main thing that we're going to be talking about in this video, we got an RX 500 or 5500 XT 8 gigabyte. And just to pull up the average FPS on this graphics card it's going to be an average of 150 and all these are taken from the low settings on call of duty modern warfare and multiplayer right so i watch a lot of videos i watch i looked up a lot of benchmarks on these gpus and this is basically what i got from it so 150 fps this is going to be perfectly fine whenever you're playing call of duty cold war you really only need 60 fps or more but if you're going to be playing competitive you probably want to be going up to you know 144 uh, and then you're also going to want to get a 144 hertz monitor so you'll be able to see that FPS in game because your FPS can be 300 but if you don't have that monitor that has the higher hertz up to match that FPS you're not going to be able to see it it's not going to be visible so uh, later in this video I'm going to show you monitors and stuff like that but let's just keep going straight through the build so this is your first one it's going to uh, run you $635 uh, obviously, you're going to uh, need to get Windows on here. If you're going to be you know, building it yourself, then it won't cost more. But if you're going to have somebody else build it, then it's going to cost a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, next one, right? So we got uh, a $665 build. Everything is the same except for the graphics card. So we got a 1660 Super, 6 gigabyte. It's a little bit of a price increase and a little bit of a performance increase with the average FPS going to 172. So this is going to be perfectly optimal to be competing in call of duty there's no there you really don't need anything more than this but uh but if, if you do want to go overkill to get that 240 hertz monitor and you know the two the two 300 fps we're going to be talking about that in this video so yeah 665 dollars is a pretty good price for what you're going to get uh out of your gameplay uh, the next one is a little bit of a price increase and a little bit of a performance increase. The graphics card is an RX 5600 XT 6GB and you can see here the FPS is going to jump up to 185 average FPS. Um, so yeah, next one we got, this is the, uh, the recommended build for Call of Duty Competitive. So I went to this website, I found this, it says PC requirements for competitive play and I just plugged this in uh, right here, oh, right here. So main things that changed were the CPU, which you really don't even need to change. Um, the CPU isn't gonna make a big difference with your gameplay. Like I said, we're mainly looking at the graphics card, at the graphics card but I wanted to plug this in because everybody's talking about it. So. Uh, so yeah, you can see that there's a pretty big price difference on the CPU, but it's not really going to be much, it, there's really not going to be any type of FPS difference. So you really don't have to get that. But going down to it, this build has a RTX 2070 Super 8 gigabyte, which to be honest is overkill, man. This, this is going to get you up to 221 FPS, as you can see there. And the price difference is pretty big, right? It's $1,100. That's a pretty big difference, but um, yeah, this is going to be overkill. This is going to be perfect for competing. Um, 
and yeah I don't know if I mentioned this before but we're not going to be doing any overclocking so if you did do any overclocking on this you might even be able to get uh, a lot more you know it could go up to 200 FPS maybe 300 FPS depending on the GPU that you get and not to mention that the 3000 series graphics cards are going to be coming out here in a couple weeks which is going to be a big performance increase so the 3070 graphics card is going to be the upgrade to the 2070 super and it's going to be a little bit of a uh, performance increase so with the 20 or with the 3070 you might be able to reach up to you know like 250 fps which is going to be just fine for uh competing but like i said you're going to want to have a monitor that's going to support that so i have two monitors pulled up right here these are the lowest prices for the best uh performance that i could find so this is a 144 hertz monitor so like i said before if you don't have a gpu that's reaching 144 fps then it's just not going to work so if you have anything above that like let's say you're reaching 200 fps in game you're not going to see anything above 144 hertz so just keep that in mind so this one's 160 dollars this is going to be just fine uh for competing if you want to go a little bit overkill uh here you have a 240 hertz monitor this is the cheapest one i could find there's probably some other uh cheaper ones you might be, be able to find some used monitors uh which will work just fine uh, this one is $360. So you want to make sure that you're getting a, a graphics card that is going to reach that FPS or close to that FPS, maybe like anywhere from, you know, 160 to 250 FPS or else it's not really going to matter the monitor that you get. Uh, your PC isn't going to see any increased performance. So uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the video. If you like the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.